This meeting was really Tony's vision, and it's been a real pleasure for me to work side by side with him. The meeting starts a year in advance to get this to happen. In fact, next year's meeting is going to start today. I haven't even seen the book yet. The book just came out. I haven't seen it. He, uh, Tony said it looks great, so it's a real thrill for the book to be available. We decided last year that we wanted to have a book to complement this meeting. And it took us a full year, and many of the people in the audience contributed to the book. Okay, here we go. We're going to get started. This anatomy and clinical correlation is a little bit of a teaser for the rest of the day. Anatomy is the foundation for everything that we do, whether we're an th athletic trainer, a physical therapist, or a surgeon. Took a uh, I took a cadaver out on Monday after cases and dissected it and videotaped it, and here's what it's going to look like. This is the shoulder looking at it from the front. This is the cadaver. It is a left shoulder. It is still cold coming out of the freezer. And so just to orient you, we get the skin taken off. And on the left is the pectoralis muscle. On the right is the deltoid, which we're reflecting. And that long tube that we got, the scissor underneath, that is the biceps tendon. In general, the shoulder anatomy is focused on finding the biceps tendon. But for us, taking care of baseball athletes, the biceps tendon is a source of symptoms. And something interesting about anatomy that we keep re-examining is this relationship between the pec that you see in the biceps. The pectoralis muscle that you see here comes over the top of the biceps. And with external rotation, you compress the biceps tendon, and it can be a source of irritation. That's why they get this groove pain sometimes, right in the front of the shoulder. This is the pec getting flipped over, and now you can see it just sits right on top of that biceps tendon. We often do injections right in that area. OK, here's another case, teaser. We're going to learn more about this case a little bit later. He's got a big, fat left arm. This actually is its right arm. I flipped the image because we got a left cadaver, so I just want everything to stay consistent. It was an emergency situation. I get a call from Mark Littlefield, who's here. He says, one of our players has a big, fat blue arm, and he sends him to the major league training room, he sends him to the hospital. He starts anticoagulation. There is a problem with his blood vessel. We're going to learn about it more. But what's interesting about this anatomy, this is his coracoid process. This is pectoralis minor. Many of the therapists spend a lot of time loosening up this pectoralis muscle because it influences the position of the scapula. But look at this anatomy here. It can push right on the big vessels of the shoulder. And if you have a certain contracture or a tightness in that area, especially with the dynamics of throwing, you can create thrombus formation. Basically, you get a blood clot in the big vessel. This is the artery that we're grabbing. And here is pectoralis minor. We're pulling it over, and you can see pectoralis minor. If it's stuck to the chest wall, if it gets big or if it gets tight, these big vessels that need blood flow can get into trouble. More on that later, thoracic outlet. This is a musculocutaneous nerve. I threw this in because my Saturday, I thought it was going to be free. Baseball season was over, was corrupted, because a 30-year-old, is our laser working? Not working perfectly, if we can troubleshoot this. A uh, 31-year-old fractured his humeral head. You can see the head here. And it dislocated and went underneath the coracoid, the place where we just saw the strap muscles coming. And what happened is he lost function of his musculocutaneous nerve. It was emergent surgery. We had to reduce his head and get his musculocutaneous nerve working again. We had a player this year, a thrower, who started to develop atrophy of his biceps muscle and lost sensation on the outside part of his arm. From the dynamics of throwing, he developed a musculocutaneous nerve neuropraxia. It's good anatomy to know. We look at it every time we do shoulder surgery, like a, a coracoid transfer, because it's in that area. Here's the musculocutaneous nerve, big nerve. It's going right into those muscles we call the strap muscles, short head of biceps. I'm reflecting it off of that coracoid, and you can see it goes right into that muscle. So this nerve is under some tension during throwing, and you can get symptoms related to it. In fact, I think it's under-recognized. This vague arm pain in the front of the arm up here could be musculocutaneous nerve. Keep it on your list of things to uh, consider. OK, this is preseason physical. Look at this guy. He says he's never been injured before. I don't believe him. Never been injured before in his life, never missed a game. Look, he's got a uh, prominent AC joint. 
This is a player from our last season. This is how it happens in baseball, typically. It's his throwing shoulder. It's not good. You collide with the wall. That's how it happens. Initial concern is concussion. Actually turns out to be an AC sprain, loses lots of time. This is what it looks like. You hit laterally, and then these ligaments, the CC ligaments and the capsule of the AC joint get injured. This is what it looks like on the cadaver. The clavicle has been uh, cut, so it's only a small lateral half of the clavicle. The bone on bottom is the coracoid. Let's troubleshoot this. Sometimes it's the battery. So this is coracoid here. Here is the, uh, took the clavicle off. We cut the CC ligaments and we cut the capsule and now you can see the thing flies off. That's what gets injured, that's why it hurts. Okay, this is uh, Tony Romeo's uh, contribution as far as I'm concerned in the past two years to our understanding of shoulder injuries for this crazy problem. That is the latissimus. You could see it functions in adducting the humerus. Look, it's a beautiful tendon. This thing unfortunately gets injured and Tony's gonna, uh, our um, Schick is gonna talk about how we take care of it. Tony's really developed a beautiful way to repair it on the inside part of the biceps. We're gonna hear more about that. Good, you don't have to whisper. He says this one's gonna work. Okay, here's another case. This one troubles me. This is the patient who gets anterior shoulder pain from throwing, and on MRI scan, they say it's a subscap problem. It's a strain, subscap strain. You see signal in the area? Maybe. This is a subscap strain, but this capsule could be a problem. Look at this subscap muscle. If I was a muscle, I'd want to be the subscap. Look at it. Strong, big, so intimate with the capsule. This is reflecting the subscap sub off of the capsule. It is so close to the capsule. If you have a subscap strain, it's possible and probable that you could have a capsular injury and maybe you need more advanced imaging. For us, it's uh, putting some dye in it. Hollis is gonna speak to us, Hollis Potter, about imaging and I'm sure she'll explain to us how we can be better at diagnosing a capsular injury. You see we're rotating the humerus and we can tension that capsule. This is what it looks like in an actual player who unfortunately injured his capsule. The camera is looking down from the top to the bottom and the capsule's injured, linear tear in the capsule. We're gonna talk more about that later. Here's the capsule tensioning with rotation. When you elevate the arm, the inferior part of the capsule gets tight. We know in throwers, they have amazing external rotation. They tend to have a different level of capsular laxity. They also have bone adaptations, but they have this amazing external rotation. Some of it is the capsule. Pretty cool to take the capsule off. We're taking it off the humerus, and you can see it is robust. This is like a strong ligament. So, of course, necessary, and when it gets injured, it's a problem. Usually it's a surgical indication if you injure your capsule if you're a thrower. This is an arthritic uh, shoulder, unfortunately, and so we don't see a lot of labrum here, but we're going to concentrate on the superior labrum to finish up. This is the dreaded slap lesion. We're going to hear more about this slap from Mike Sicotti. This is a bad one. This is part of the theory of why it happens. When you internally and externally rotate for a living, Look at that biceps tendon. It is working back and forth and it's rubbing and it's getting pulled on. You can see it doesn't look happy. It's all flat against the humeral head. This is what it's like when you rotate, trying to simulate back and forth. There's this asymmetric tensioning of tissue. Andrews calls it and John Conway calls it weed pulling. If you wanted to rip this biceps off, you would probably pull as hard as you can and pull back and forth like that to get certain fibers to break. This looks like almost like the case where it's injured in the, uh, uh, on that arthroscopy video. Okay, I'm gonna finish there. I've said this in this book called Skill, fun book to write. Nothing changes behavior more than knowledge of anatomy, especially if you know where the nerves are and we've learned so much more and we constantly review anatomy, we constantly review it. Shiku's here is looking at UCL anatomy so we can get better at UCL reconstruction. So it's something that I think is worth reviewing. We're gonna keep going back to these cases throughout the day. Thanks so much.